Welcome to GSC. Thank you for joining us today. We are very glad to be here, and we're glad that you are here with us today as well. Today, we have Lynn Gergich with us from the Chamber of Commons and Commerce of Town. Thank you, Katie. My name is Lynn Gergich, and I'm the Executive Director of the Germantown Area Chamber of Commerce. And just to clarify a little bit, the Chamber of Commerce is a business membership organization. And today we have 180 businesses, organizations, and individuals as members serving the Germantown community. The Chamber is marking its 35th anniversary in 2016. Our mission statement is to advance the success and well-being of our members. The Chamber will work with GSC to support the continuing success as they move and settle into Germantown. Thank you for investing in our community. Today we focus on the well-being of GSC. Ribbon cuttings are poignant events marking a momentous occasion, and today we do have a momentous occasion. It's an opportunity to acquaint people in the Germantown business community with the employees and management of GSC. So today I want to begin by giving you a little background on David Kazinksis. He's the owner, president, and CEO of GSC, a mechanical engineer. And he started GSC in 1989 as one of the first companies to introduce 3D printers to their customers. And then in 1995, SolidWorks 3D CAD. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you David Kaczynskis. Thank you, Lynn. Well, I got to tell you, it's, it's been great. And uh, I want to thank a couple people here. I want to thank my wife and my family. And uh, most of all, I want to thank God for how he's really blessed us. And uh, it's been It's been really a great experience, and, uh, you know, one of those things they, they uh, talk about is uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, not many of us get the opportunity to try it, and when we do try it, it's kind of a scary thing, and, you know, they always say what, one out of every five or ten businesses fail, and I'm not even sure what it would be today, how things are changing so rapidly, but we've been in business since 1989, and uh, we started out working with a number of different companies, and we basically started out as a group of consulting engineers working with companies to try to make them more successful. I came out of the aircraft industry, and I have got a background in design engineering manufacturing and also have done uh, simulation also. So I've got a pretty broad background. And so we look at improving product design for companies. And uh, the interesting thing is when we started the company, you're, you know, you're, you're pretty bold. You think that you're going to go in and solve everybody's problems. It's not that way, you know. Uh, if it's, you know, one, you're one person, you're not a whole team of people. So what we realized quickly is that we have to attract people. So people has always been a real important thing as our company has grown. So started out as me, myself, and I, and then we added employees uh, for a number of years. We got up to about 13, and then all of a sudden, 1995, we started kind of almost a doubling effect. And I believe we're about 65 employees today, and we'll probably grow to about 88 and uh, or, or larger even. Um, so we focus on a couple different things. We focus on software, and we also do focus on some hardware. So when we look at the software, though, we look at more the customer, what they're doing and how they're doing it. So it could be SolidWorks or Dassault System SolidWorks, which is a 3D CAD modeling software. But we go in and we look at the customer. We understand what their business is and how how they're making things. And what we try to do is we work with them, put a process together with them so we're actually their partner and uh, come up with a great solution. So the total solution that we're, we're, we're working with is all integrated applications, so everything speaks really well together. And uh, you can see on this uh, my Myomo uh, arm here, we're looking at an intelligent device that's actually very functional that actually uh, gives arm movement and so forth, you know, for uh, the handicap and so forth. So, but you can see what we're doing. We're designing not only the packaging for parts, and you can see some of the stuff that we're doing with the 3D printing side of it, 
we can actually print these things, but we're also creating the intelligence that goes inside of it with the printed circuit boards and so forth uh, to make the, the product itself, and then also creating technical documentation. So paper is pretty much gone. I don't know, we're, we're still trying to get rid of it, but uh, from a standpoint of putting everything on the web and documentation, uh, we're actually managing all that data. But where we really pride ourselves is, is in our people and our consulting uh, side of the business. Uh, everyone we've been hiring, we've gone into an initiative we call, I call it Gen 2. So it's Generation 2 of not only our family in the business, uh, which they've been in for quite a few years now, and, uh, uh, but it's also second generation of the, uh, our business, where we're going, what we're doing, and how we're working with customers. So uh, we're actually looking at more of the process and the people and the solution with the customer in order to be successful. It's not totally against, totally all about the software or the particular product. So for example, even if uh, we look at 3D printing, a lot of the stuff that we do today is in ABS plastics or high temperature type plastics. And I came from Textron or uh, you know aircraft uh, business and now what we're doing is we're doing things with metals. So, um, I still coordinate with those people at Textron and they're creating a new uh, aircraft called the Denali. It's a, a turbojet uh, prop. And uh, GE actually won the contract on the jet engine and they're able to produce an engine that's gonna be 20% more efficient. They were the only ones that stepped up to the plate uh, from Pratt and, Ritt, Pratt and Whitney and William Jett and, and these types of people. Uh, but their winning factor was they're gonna produce about 850 parts out of metal that they're gonna be 3D printing. So it's pretty amazing stuff when you think about it. So we're just scratching the surface of it now. So I don't think a lot of people see you know, that what's going on, but uh, you're gonna see a lot of that today in the next couple of days, what we're doing here uh, with companies locally. So, But I'd like you to, to listen on to what some of our uh, management staff have to say about our process. Here at GSC, we're really passionate about people. And actually, uh, it starts with the employees and it all goes all the way through to the customer. And really, the end goal is really to provide an excellent solution for the customer. We're trying to partner with our customer so that they're as productive as possible with the tools they have, with the people they have, and the processes that are unique to their business. A partner really understands the customer's business, the ins and outs, the goals of the organization. What are you trying to do this year to differentiate your company? And we try to align ourselves, our solutions, our expertise with helping you solve that problem. We're really focusing on the solution. We're looking at the process and we're coming alongside the customer and actually working with them to really understand the process. But we don't just bring you a solution. We actually want to understand in a profound way what your needs are and in a way that you might not even be able to tell us. We provide software support and technology. We provide different additive manufacturing potentials for them. And we provide the support and the training so that they can be as productive as possible. We match up what technology fits your application and then we provide that solution to you. Everybody in our company is trained in a process for how to go about thinking about innovative ways. In our company, we're seeing you know, more ideas. I think we're getting more innovative with our customers and presenting them different ways of approaching their problems. We help our customers' management understand potential gaps or potential needs for training or technology that might exist in our day-to-day -day interactions with them. At the end of the day, we want to make sure when we come back in and work with a customer, they're extremely happy and they like what we've done and they like what they've done, and we fit well together. We're a great team, so that's really important to us, and we want to have that open communication style. We have a very high retention rate from our customers, a lot of loyalty, and there's a reason for that. It's really our people. We try to hire people that have a lot of experience. So we have uh, people that have been in uh, uh, engineer-to-order businesses, businesses that are built to stack. Uh, we also have them that are uh, build to order and so as well as various variety of industries. Those people have the capability of coming into our customer base and really understanding what they're dealing with, what challenges they have, and then providing real solutions to their problems. The technology that GSC provides is actually world-class technology. We have this total portfolio of integrated solutions that actually alone 
are just a wonderful set and actually can offer a lot of productivity. It's a seamless technology and that's what companies are looking for today. Something that's really easy to use, easy to manage, and people love it. So at GSC, training is part of the whole package that we deliver for our customers. Our training program with our dedicated trainers with years of industry experience and certifications take you from what's my problem to here's my solution and let you use your hands on the tool to find out how you would do it. Everything we do is based on a profound knowledge of our customers. GSC really does have the people, the process, and the technologies to drive your business success. We are really an extension of your team. So it really is about understanding the, in the, uh, the customer, the products that they're making, and how they're making them. And then we look to see what the process improvements can be, and then we try to make those recommendations, work along with them as a team, you know, a lot of times we have to provide ROIs and, and all those types of things as anybody else in business would have to do. But, uh, you know, basically it's a, it's a fresh set of eyes on, on what they're doing. Uh, the other thing, too, on our Gen 2 project, so uh, guys like myself with a lot of experience, we're hiring uh, other people with many years of experience in the, in the engineering field, uh, people from Mercury Marine, uh, General Motors, uh, ITW Research, and those types of things. So what we're doing is this is our mission our, us, us guys' is mission to coach and mentor the next generation. So that's kind of how we're, we're positioning ourselves as a company for longevity. And then we're also partnering with the uh, EAA. Uh, if, if you may know, uh, we've actually put a program together where if you're a member of the EAA, you're eligible to get our software at no charge. So this is about people that like to design, innovate, and make, you know. So we're being much a part of that. So we're hosting... Uh, a lot of webinars and those types of things for training, and then we're also helping them create a support mechanism within their organization. So it's really a neat event. But just to kind of give you an idea, when we talk about 3D printing, um, and I only have one minute left here, but uh, we can print things that you can't actually manufacture. And so someone in the aircraft industry may want to be putting some ventilation in their aircraft, and how are they going to make that? So we'll 3D print the tool, actually, and then from there, we can actually lay up, you know, carbon fiber and other materials also. So I'll pass this around. You can take a look at it. But uh, so when we talk about 3D printing and additive manufacturing, we're looking at not necessarily high volume production. We're looking at low volume production that parts that are actually functionally and that actually work uh, within that environment. But with all that, I just want to let you guys, I really want to let you know we're, we are actually glad to be here. Uh, this has really been exciting for us. Um, We've got several people in the room that I'd like to just point out real quick. Um, Kabbalah Washatko, uh, Kirk, he is our architect on, on this project here. You want to say a few words, Kirk? Or? He, but so, so the, perp, the thing is, is, as you all know, this was family fun, so this has really been a family fun adventure for us. We, we re repurposed the building. We were, were looking for something special, something that really stood out and really accommodated what we do for a biz from a business perspective. And uh, we believe we've accomplished that with uh, these guys. Uh, we've also rebranded with GS. We've got GS in the room back here. We've done uh, website content creation, all these types of things. They've really helped us out a lot. And so very appreciative with that. Trig Jacobson actually helped us out early on in the branding. He's uh, with Jake's Cafe up in Sheboygan, another great organization there, very entrepreneurial. And uh, I'd give trigger a lot of credit, good friend of mine. And so, but with that, I, I just want to let you guys know a lot of the things in this building we used from our customers. So Mayline uh, did a lot of the, the, the furniture. Uh, these, this classroom was done by Bradford Manufacturing out of Illinois, actually. We'll get them over here in Wisconsin. Uh, we've used Cree Lighting, who does all the LEDs, the cool LEDs. And if you go out in the back areas, you'll see LEDs that look like wings of airplanes that have a real nice optic to it and actually really shine a nice light up on the, on the ceiling. Uh, Perlick, we've got John Hoppy here, who we've used in our cafe area for refrigeration, ice cube maker, which everyone just loves. So uh, I would recommend everyone getting an ice cube maker also. So, and uh, we also have Black Wolf Design uh, with another customer out of Omro, Wisconsin, uh, who actually did all that nice ash furniture for us that 
we kind of combined with Mayline too, kind of gave it a nice touch. So um, Dormadors is another one. There's a number of people that we, we have used. So uh, Springs Window Fashion out of Madison uh, has been buying up quite a few companies. They bought up Mecco Shades. So we're trying to work with that organization also from a, from a corporate standpoint also. So a lot of automation in this building that uh, more than we ever had. We love it and uh, we're glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. That really was a good insight as to who GSC is. All right, so we also have Dan Canodal here with us who would like to say a couple words. He is our state representative. Thank you, Katie. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, today. I'm a, uh, a local guy. I'm the uh, state uh, representative for uh, Germantown. I do live here uh, in Germantown. And uh, I know you're not here for civics lessons, but just, just so you get an idea of who these people are, your state representatives, there's 99 of us, and we each represent about 57,000 people. And then you have your state uh, senator, and this uh, area is Alberta Darling, and then, of course, your governor, Governor Walker, and the lieutenant governor, who you'll meet uh, shortly. So those are your state uh, representatives. And uh, we really like to, uh, to be in our districts and to come to events like this. There's no question about when we see success and, uh, and job growth. And uh, I just wanted to point out uh, a couple things. The focus really at the state government level the last, uh, at least the last five years with, uh, with Governor Walker was uh, to be a, create a more competitive uh, environment for, uh, for business to be so they are welcomed here in the state of Wisconsin, so they feel comfortable growing here and uh, or for companies to come here from from out of state. So we've done uh, many things to be more competitive, particularly with our uh, our neighboring uh, states. And we've had some great successes. There's no doubt about that. And uh, the one area I've been carrying this uh, around with me for uh, a while. Uh, now these uh, two pages. Uh, these are my property tax bills. So you most of you are familiar with these. And this is, I'm a small business owner for, for 31 years. This is actually the property tax bills for, uh, for my uh, business property out uh, in Hartford. And I've asked the Lieutenant Governor if she can just verify these for me. And uh, she has not seen these before today. But uh, Rebecca, if you could state the year and then the amount, and then this page is a different year and a different amount. So this is? In 2010, Dan, you paid, or they billed you for, $15,049.95. I trust you paid it all. And then, otherwise you'd be in jail. And then in 2015, you were billed, wow, this is, do you want to say what this is? You want me to say this? Okay. You were billed $12,168.70 for a difference of? That's $3,000 and change. So I just wanted to point that out in that five-year period. And, and I don't know, you know about you with your property taxes, but I, I actually keep this paper and go back all the time. And so in this five-year period, my property taxes have gone down $3,000. That's significant. So that's, you know, that's $3,000 I can put towards my first 3D printer uh, purchase or something, something like that. Maybe we'll put it towards hiring another employee. But uh, it's $3,000 I can keep in the business and then I can uh, spend back uh, in the economy. So that, uh, to me, has just been a great success story that we've accomplished here in the uh, state of Wisconsin in just that uh, one area. And uh, in the manufacturing and fabrication sector, uh, I'm always thrilled. I, my, my two sons are both mechanical uh, engineers and are always looking to explore. I'm glad I heard about aerospace. I need to send my youngest son over here to uh, talk about that. And uh, I would encourage you uh, in your business, to, if you haven't already, to, uh, to reach out to the local school district, to the Germantown School District. We need to get the students into places like this so they can see what you're doing, they can see the future. Once they see the fabricating and, and manufacturing and the technology uh, involved, their eyeballs just open up. And, and it's really a wow experience for them. And that's how we're gonna get that pipeline opened up 
for the employees uh, of the future for these uh, type of businesses. So I really encourage you to, uh, to reach out uh, if you haven't. And I'd be thrilled to bring a busload of students in and uh, take a tour and uh, share your knowledge uh, with them, and, and we'll have more people uh, in this sector. So, uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up. And here's Katie. And again, welcome uh, to Germantown. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So today we also have with us our 44th Lieutenant Governor, Rebecca Clayfish. She is a great ambassador for Wisconsin Jobs, and she also chairs the Manufacturing Committee for the Aerospace and States Association. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish. Thank you, Katie, and good afternoon, everyone. I don't know how you possibly make family fun any funner besides Manufacturing Month. So I am thrilled for this moment. I am thrilled that you chose to do this ribbon cutting and this move today because that is what we celebrate every October here in Wisconsin because every year we compete and we're Wisconsinites, so man, do we ever compete with Indiana for the most manufacturing jobs per capita in the entire United States of America. We were number two last year, but man, are we coming after them this year. And this is a perfect representation of how we do it. Good, organic, natural business growth. And when, David, I heard you, where are you, David? When I heard you talk about, see, he was checking out 3D printers. They're really cool. I would be out there, too, if I weren't talking. When I heard you talk about your commitment to aerospace and aviation, I was thrilled because Katie mentioned that I do a lot of work with the Aerospace States Association, but aerospace and aviation is a high point of Wisconsin's export economy this year. It's no big secret that because we are a manufacturing-based economy, we are a little bit dependent on the dollar. And this past year, the dollar's been pretty strong. And when you talk about export numbers, the conditions are kind of tough out there, except Wisconsin has a bright, shiny spot this year in particular. In this year, while our general exports across the board have been down because of the strength of the dollar, our exports in aviation and aerospace, because we have really zeroed in on a cluster strategy that we hope will one day mirror what we did with freshwater technology in Milwaukee, our exports there are up 19% year over year. I think that's a terrific number. And I think that also represents a huge potential for growth, not only for here, but all across the state, where we have 200 companies operational in this space, 140 of them are already suppliers to a giant like Boeing. This is a really big deal. And frankly, manufacturing is a really big deal, not just in this month, but every month. It's our heritage, but it's also our future. And that message resonates statewide. It's funny, Dave, that um, I ran into a couple of your employees here one of whom I had met last week at uh, UW Stout, of all places, far away from here in Menominee. The other I had met in Ashland at an ideas conference. Again, far away. I mean, Wisconsin's a big state. We're about eight hours door to door. And when I meet an employee from GSC eight hours away, well, that's pretty impressive because that tells me that folks are invested all across Wisconsin in manufacturing's future which is significant because manufacturing represents about 19% of our gross state product. On top of that, we have about 460,000 workers who are active every day in this cluster of our economy. Great family sustaining wages. In fact, the average manufacturing employee makes significantly more than the average Wisconsin employee. All of these numbers are a really big deal. And all of these numbers represent something important for Wisconsin's future, something Dan hit on when he talked, that relationship between manufacturers and the Grow Your Own Workforce Coalition at the K-12 schools. We would love for you to talk to the little ones of Wisconsin about the future of this industry because we believe this industry has a huge future. For the kids who are 
in first grade, in sixth grade, even in 12th grade. I had the opportunity right before I came here to meet with a couple dozen Germans. It was a parliamentarian delegation that came here to study politics in an election year in a purple state like Wisconsin. Their first question, so what's going on with the whole Trump thing? I said, did you see the Packers last night? <laughs> what we talked a lot about, though, was the fact that we have a huge commonality in our education system, in our economic system, and ultimately our hopes for future generations. Just like the Germans, we're heavy in manufacturing and agriculture. Just like the Germans, we hope to educate our children to understand that you don't necessarily need to be a doctor or a lawyer in order to be respected in American culture. In fact, manufacturing jobs should be lifted up and heralded in the same way. We have a lot to offer in our manufacturing culture here in Wisconsin. And so I'm glad we get to celebrate today. Dave, the fact that you've been in business since 1989, the fact that you're making family fun funner by moving here, and by the fact that you project more people coming not only to GSC, but the manufacturing industry right here in Wisconsin. Congratulations on the day. We're very happy for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. All right. At this time, that is the conclusion of our welcome ceremony. So thank you all very much for coming. I'd like to invite um, the both of you to come and join us for the ribbon cutting in the lobby, as well as Lynn and everyone who was with you. We're going to take a picture. The rest of you are also welcome to join us and watch. Otherwise, you can have a self-guided tour around the building. And I know there's a couple of us who would love to show you around if you have more questions. I don't know if you noticed, but we have 3D printed scissors up here that we'll be using. Um, so please join us in the lobby if you would like to. Thank you.